Yes, Manish. Uh, started the recording. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, guys. Nice to meet you all. This is uh, Manish Kumar, and I have extensive experience in SAP Ariba um, and S4 HANA in S4 HANA and MM and SAP Ariba and basically all modules. And I've done implementation projects um, for a number of industries, including public sector, transportation, retail, uh, you know, all major industries, primarily in North America. Because that's where I've been living for about 15 odd years. Um, so look forward to this demo session and I look forward to also work with you all in this training program. Um, so let's get started, folks. Okay, I generally what I do is I start with an intro to SAP Ariba. Because right? a lot of us have probably heard about it, but maybe we not, not of all of us know what exactly it is, right? So I try to give a bit of intro. Introduction to SAP Ariba. Most of us are, I, I guess a good chunk of us might already know what is a SaaS solution, right? So Ariba is a SaaS solution. SaaS means software as a service. And it was one of the first ones in the market on the procurement side to come up with a SaaS architecture, right? Before this, a lot of products out there in the market were on-premise. These were the guys who started on-premise and then they moved to Hello? the cloud. Hello, Manish, can you hear me? I read, yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, man. Actually, I was a little late here. Okay, I think the I was actually indeed I joined earlier, but my mic was not working properly. So yeah, anyways, we have started the session, right? Yeah. So I think there are 25 plus odd participants here. So mm -hmm. guys, uh, today we are going to have the demo session. I think Manish has already given the intro of him. So just to add his introduction part over here. Uh, we are conducting this training since 2017 onwards, okay? Uh, especially SAP Ariba training. And we are one of the very pointer in the market. We have trained almost 5,000 plus participants in SAP Ariba. And Manish is having so good experience. He's a solution architect right now, having more than 18 years of experience, I guess. He has already brief about him. So this training, the goal of this particular training is going to be getting a deep insight on SAP Ariba technology, like we are covering upstream, downstream, and integration also. Okay, so this is not simply kind of end user training, it's going to be a consultant based training. We are looking into a deep drive into the configurations of all these aspects, like sourcing, P2P process, and resourcing. Also, there are a lot many things which we are going to discuss further in this one. So in today's session, Manish will be showing like what are the aspects we are going to discuss. He's one of the very best mentor so far and he'll be answering all your queries so for betterment of this recording so what we have done is like we have muted everyone so please park your queries separately when we have a chance i mean like after finishing the demo session we'll allow every one of you to ask the questions over here fine then guys so thank you so much i'm so sorry manish to interrupt you in between thank you over to you yeah, yeah no worries Arash. thanks and you know uh, we will likely finish the demo in odd one hour reason is we want to keep a good chunk of time for questions for all of you to clarify anything so it's a SaaS solution software as a service right or it is a cloud based solution right and naturally as we said it is sap ariba which means it is owned by sap ariba since 2012. So the moment SAP Ariba went on the cloud, a big ERP provider, which is SAP, they bought them. They saw the value that there is some innovation happening and this is a big trend which is gonna happen in the future, right? It is a e-procurement solution, e because it is on the cloud and procurement because it is really a procurement solution. What processes does it support in very simple language it supports the s2p process or some sometimes people call it s2p or it is source to pay in full form right so all the modules in ariba <clears throat> they revolve around this process of source to pay which is like end-to-end -end procurement 
initiating from sourcing and going all the way down to payment. That said, payment does not get processed in Ariba. It get pro gets processed in SAP. We'll talk about that as well. In addition, it has certain modules for supplier management. Supplier management does not fall under the S2P process because it's not really processes data management, creating data, managing data. So broadly speaking, two types of processes. One is managing supplies, other is the end-to-end -end source to the process. So let's start with the point number two, which is supplier management. So as I'm talking today in the demo, I'm introducing you guys briefly to every single module which we have and which we will cover also in great level of detail in our training, right? And when we say detail, as Araj mentioned, it's not just end user. We will start sometime with the end user, understanding how the process works. It is, however, focused on making you guys ready for being a consultant, right? For which understanding a bit of end user is important. So you will cover process and also the configurations, including integration, of course. Supplier management module. Right? In this, there is two components. One is SLP, supplier lifecycle and performance module. This is a very robust module. It has been around since 2017. And uh, sometimes what happens is SAP S4 HANA when clients uh, you know, either migrate to S4HANA or they start a greenfield project in S4HANA. Uh, since SAP's product is, Ariba is SAP's product, right? They try to, and they generally do tag along some common or popular modules to clients, even if that doesn't seem like it's the most important thing for them to do okay? for a fraction of cost. So hence why SLP is just one of those modules which has just so many benefits for supplier data management which we'll discuss in more details, uh, you know, a little bit today and a little bit afterwards. That is just gets into basically all projects. SLP just one of those modules. Very robust, very detailed, very beneficial. So that's one part of supplier management. There is also another part of supplier man management called supplier risk. This is a rel relatively, you know, newer module. <clears throat> um, it does have a market. It's not as big as the supplier management module. So just to distinguish supplier management module collectively is made up of two, SLP and risk management. The two are more or less integrated. Like if you work in SLP, you are able to navigate to the risk data. If you are in risk, you are able to find the supplier data, right? So there is a, over time, what they have Rebas realized is it's sometimes just better to, you know, sell both of them as one product and they just lump it as supplier management, right? Then if you go to S2P process or source to pay process, what are the various modules involved in it? As the name says, source, right? Sourcing module is the first module. Then there is contracts module, right? Source to be process start and from sourcing, you typically create a contract. And after contract, what you do is you go to create a purchase order, which helps happens in a rebus buying module. And then in the end, you end up with invoicing. Right? Then there is invoicing module. So what we will do now is we'll go, since we know that what are the various modules available, now we cannot forget about also there is integration middleware, which is not really a module, it's more like a middleware. It's called, hold on, I forgot the new name once again. Let's call it with the old name CIG, it's Cloud Integration Gateway. I was just looking at yesterday. Um, yeah, The new name is Managed Spend Gateway for procurement and business network. So far, there is no acronym for it. I still prefer calling it CIG, right? So I might use it still in our training. So overall, if we look in the course, what are we doing? Looking at SLP, looking at supplier risk, looking at sourcing contracts, buying and invoicing. And as we were talking earlier, there is two components to it, process 
and also configuration. In regards to integration, there is not much of process. There is mainly configuration. So integration, mainly we are looking at configuration. So all the modules, again, um, process and configuration. However, CIG is just going to be configuration because basically there is no process in there. Now let's try to understand each of these modules in a little bit more detail. Let's look at the SFP module. As the name says, it's supplier, life cycle, and performance, right? So we'll try to note down some key points about it so that you guys some, get some good idea about it. Primary purpose of this module is to simplify supplier data creation and management. Now, one might wonder, you know, why is there a need to simplify supplier data creation and management for this we must ask who is a supplier right supplier is an organization that is providing goods or services to our client our client is the person who's going to implement sap arena and so that organization is supplied by the supplier so supplier has their own data so when we say data they have their of name they have their different uh, details such as tax numbers they have their banking information they have address um, they have their shipping locations and everything right all those are supplier information right or supplier data now if there is no slp module that a client is using what happens in instead is regardless of what erp is being used sap or something else right in absence of slp clients what they will do is they will collect the data from a supplier over emails over phone calls right basically ask them to fill a form right and they will have no consistent template to use and since you're collecting data over phone over email there is no way you can report on it right uh, until you actually end up creating it in sap right or any other backend system there is no way to collect that data electronically right because you're either sending emails or you know talking over the phone doing data to yourself since you cannot there is no electric uh, electronic way to collect that data there is no electronic way to update that data right so you first you will collect the data whenever there is a need to update there is going to be a back and forth over emails once again which is a manual process right which is quite cumbersome and in the absence of an electronic process what happens is Client has a pain point. Maybe we do a lot of work in data management, and uh, there are clients who will have a large number of suppliers, let's say 2,000, 3,000. So, which means a lot of effort is put in making sure there is a manual way to manage all that. So, SLP takes that pain away. Right? So, it solves all that by making the process of data collection electronic, making approvals electronic, and making the process of managing data over the life cycle of the supplier also electronic because. Um, reason is <clears throat> SLP has native integration with the SAP business network, right? And we will just add our second uh, point the simplification of the supplier data collection and management is made possible by the SAP business network previously called sap Re previously called just the reba network sap board was not there <clears throat> it got rebranded a couple of years ago so which is a website or a portal for suppliers and has approximately 7 million suppliers Right. So in production, it has about 7 million suppliers that are already having an account there. Right. So it's pretty big network for suppliers. Right. So clients see that, hey, we are going to work with, let's say, 2,000 odd suppliers. Or even network already has 7 million already. <clears throat> There's a good chance that out of 2,000, at least 500 big suppliers will already, already be there. And that is true for most cases. Right. Big companies dealing with big suppliers those big suppliers are already in the business network. So there is a win-win for both on just on implementing SLP module and also Ariva overall, right? Because suppliers are using business network, 
um, which has native integration with all the Reaper modules and also there is integrations possible with SAP, right? So there is good benefits which are seen on both sides. <clears throat> so this is just the onboarding part or just the supplier data creation part. What else? There are other things which also SLP supports. Because if it is not, if it is just for data creation and management, nobody will call it lifecycle. They will call it supplier data management module, right? That's not what it is called. It's called lifecycle, right? Lifecycle includes not just data creation and management, it includes other things too. It also supports the best practice supplier lifecycle process which is noted below so when as a best practice that is Ariva best practice process not mine or not yours right it starts with supplier request goes to supplier registration supplier qualification supplier preferred status Right. So this, these four steps are called basically the best practice process for supplier lifecycle. So these are in sequence, request, registration, qualification, and preferred status. So SLP has a capability of having a supplier go through the best practice process, not just creating a data and syncing with the backend. It's a, it is more than that. Right. Now, of course, when other Ariba modules come in picture, it has integrations with those two. And as we get in more details in our training, we'll talk about all those integrations, like how each module interact with each other. And there are other things in SLP module too, right? Um, which are again related with supplier data. And there are some unique functionalities which are supporting some unique business processes, not necessarily the, the best practice SLP process. And we'll talk about those too, right? As we deep dive into more details. Now let's talk about supplier risk management module as i was saying this module was a little bit more popular in COVID. this is when some other competitor also came with similar modules because they felt, they felt that COVID is never going to go away so the risks are going to be stay forever being staying forever so but it's gone it's history now right supplier risk management module The primary purpose of this module is to provide visibility into the risk profiles of suppliers that are present in the SLP module. Right, so these two are linked together. You create supplier data, then SLP module is monitoring the supplier suppliers risk all the suppliers that, that are in slp those are monitored from a risk perspective it has a well-defined logic which ariba came up with and for from ariba's perspective i think it is pretty much I mean, in my view it is a good logic when i say good logic means the criteria or the you know the scales on which ariba tries to uh, measure the risk there is four criteria and robust in the sense that there is good data sources right so as this module the risk module gets data from 700k plus websites globally right so a supplier can be in let's say ukraine supplier can be in let's say you know philippines wherever right there is 700,000 websites plus globally, which are feeding into the data for the risk. Of course, all the data comes in some logic of or program which Ariba has written down that is run based on that. The supplier is given a risk profile for all those four criteria I was talking about. In addition to these 700K uh, you know, free websites, there are some key, very, very unique websites which are out there. Um, in which you know some clients in very distinct industries in some countries they want to you know have a connection with Ariva has that service as a paid service as well. There is no you know simple list for us to say that this is particular one which is going to work globally. It kind of varies by geography. Like the US is going to have a different you know um, provider for that type of you know information for risk. 
maybe India is going to have a different type of provider. So there are opportunities to connect with those guys as well through APIs. This is where risk management module goes beyond what it is supposed to do. And some clients see benefit in it. I think it is getting more popular over time. Now let's move on to our S2P process. So these are supplier management modules. Now we're going to go to the actual S2P process modules, which are the existing modules, which are there from day one. Right? So they were created many, many years ago. They are very robust, used by many, many clients, hundreds and, hundreds and thousands of clients globally. A lot of spend is happening, right? Which are like the bread and butter of Ariva. Now SLP, of course, is part of that. Sourcing module. Some of us might know what is sourcing, some of us might not know. Because some of us might be from procurement, some of us might not be. Those of us who are from procurement background or supply chain background, they will understand what sourcing might mean, right? More or less, if you're from SAP, your understanding might be slightly different. In Ariba, sourcing is much more detailed than what ERP systems provide. And that's the business case of implementing it. It's more detailed. So if sourcing module is not there, then things happen differently. So in a way, sourcing module also tries to digitize some processes. And what are those processes? So we can see the primary purpose of the sourcing module is to digitize the RFX process. Now, a lot of us might not understand what RFX means, right? So with a the RFX simplicity, it is a tender or a request for proposal. And if you don't know what a tender or request for proposal, it's a very big document, right? Which has a number of questions, um, requirements, which supplier needs to, you know, provide information for so that, uh, you know, the buyer can look at it. So your client who is implementing SAP Riva sourcing module, in this module, they will create the RFP or tender document, right? And they will send this tender to the supplier and supplier is gonna give data to you. The question is, why do you need to do all that, right? It's a very first step in the source to be process, right? And what I mean by that is, if you are looking for something for which you don't know, what is the actual need, right? Um, or for example, you're not clear on what to buy, where to buy, how much to pay for, right? Means there is no existing supplier. So in SAP language, it's called source of supply. If you don't have a source of supply, then you need to find it. And this sourcing module simplifies that source of supply identification. So if a client does not have the sourcing module, what they will do is they will do manual steps outside of their system and they will do RFX via email or Excel, you know, or webs or you know, um, what do you call war documents, right? In very, very mature countries, in very, very mature geographies, there are some public portals as well they will do. Right? So Riba can talk to all of them. There are ways to connect the system with multiple portals uh, through integrations via APIs. You know, that's definitely possible to do. But for clients who are, you know, doing everything manually, what do you do? Right? They have an opportunity to make it more digital, right? Who wants to work on emails and Excel documents and track them? You can't even report on them. You have no history, right? So this is where sourcing comes in picture. They try to make the process of RFX creation and management and evaluation digital. So RFX is not just creating a document, it's much more than that. So RFX is a document, there's a process which revolves around it. Because you create a proposal, then you will, you know, potentially you will get a approval to it, potentially you will send it to, you know, other reviewers in the company. So it, it kind of varies by company to company. And it's quite, it can be a little bit customized, right? The sourcing module gives you that opportunity to. Right? So RFX is there. In addition, this module lets you customize your process for RFX management. Right? So in simple language, three bullet points. This is what sourcing module at a high level is. What else after sourcing? Contract management module. Typically, after the RFX is RFX process is finished, the most common step which happens is creation of a contract. 
because artifacts is a pretty detailed process you will send some lot of information to supplier get a lot of information spend a lot of time into it right after that you want to have some good relationship with the supplier for a long term this is where you get into contract creation now those from SAP background see contract as a transactional contract, like an outline agreement, similar in other ERPs, if you guys have worked on them. Here, contract management is two parts, right? So let's put that down. Within Ariba, contract management has two aspects. First is, of course, some of us might know, the transactional contract okay this is the contract with the pricing details and the pricing can be consumed in creating a PRPO right so that's transactional contract also there is something called a legal contract or a legal agreement in Ariva, you call it a main agreement. And just like the sourcing module has RFX as a document that is a key document, in contracts, main agreement is a very important document. It is a legal document. And if Ariva contracts is not there, the process around creation and management of legal agreement is also manual. Just like process of RFX creation is manual, legal agreement creation is also manual. Okay. Now, if it is manual, there is an opportunity for clients to make it better. And this is where, similar as before, this module aims to digitize the contract management process. Right? When I say contract management, it's legal agreement. The transactional contract is only created if legal agreement is there. In real life so if you guys are working in different erps right most of you probably already know right until this legal agreement is signed or created outside of your erp system you cannot create your transactional contract in the system now if there is no system involved and clients can of course cheat right they can create a contract and we'll sign it later on that can happen so there is less compliance to the overall process too so this brings more compliance in the picture too right you cannot just buy, you got to sign an agreement because that's what our company policy is, right? So depending upon what the client's requirements are, you can bring the right level of compliance to the right level of process, which you can customize for the client. So these two modules are very, very highly customizable, right? SLP, not so much, not so much but these are very, very customizable, right? So this module, similar to above, the primary, purpose of the contracts module is to digitize the legal contract. I'll use this word again, the one I used above, legal agreement, creation, and management. This process, which is always not sometimes always customized to the client requirements also brings compliance with the company policies and procedures sure i like this ai stuff which this is doing it's suggesting me um you know what i should write great i have to think less so that's contract management module now you have created a contract right you have signed a contract with a supplier you have a transactional contract which has the pricing details means you got to somehow buy now right that's where this buying module comes in picture so next module is buying module And what does module do? See, all ERPs, SAP supports creation of a PR, creation of a PO, right? So if this, these processes can be done in SAP or in another ERP, right? 
then what is the need for a buying module? I understand that, or we all understand that contract management, sourcing, supplier management is something very, very unique, which ERP systems do not have. And one of the reasons ERP systems do not have it because of the native integration of all these modules with the SAP business network. So if all that is there, then why do we need buying module? There is a very, very unique use case for a buying module, right? Ariba buying module aims to simplify and control the tail end spend. I want to bring this word called tail end spend. Now, depending upon the industry, tail end spend itself might be the main spend. When I say tail end means indirect spend, right? Or the spend that is indirect. Again, this word can be used in some industries. Some industries might just use tail end. They might not even use indirect, right? So all, all, all what I'm trying to say is, in simple language or simple terms, um, the buying module aims to support the process for purchasing non-inventory and non-saleable goods services. Something, something you will not inventory, something you will not forecast, something you will not sell. So if a manufacturer, manufacturer has a lot of inventory of raw materials and finished products, right? For those guys, Ariba is not supporting their core purchases, which is, you know, raw materials or supporting the storage of that in their warehouses. No, that's not what buying module is doing. It is trying to help them in buying non-inventory, right? Let's say some spare parts which are low value, they are not stocking. They buy off a catalog, right? Uh, some services, uh, because when you do the services from Ariba along with the catalogs, then you have your SAV business network native integration, which is pretty good. Um, then you also have them buy things such as office supplies, you know, um, IT equipment. If you're a retailer, then you have a lot of inventory, but you're not manufacturing anything, right? You are selling a lot of things, right? You're not supporting that inventory or those purchases through Ariba. You're supposing them for office supplies. You're supposing them, uh, supporting them for packaging, packaging material, IT equipment, right? Some services like cleaning their stores, cleaning their warehouses, right? all those things buying module supports right it supports very distinct processes that's the key message not everything okay that's something worth keeping in mind uh, especially if you're new to ariba because you might think it supports everything i have seen clients who buy sushi in in ariba too right some asian a lot of asian representation there um so those some some of those scenarios can also happen now it not just supports it also tries to make it easier and nicer right see all of us are um, we are in this age of you know e-commerce right e-commerce started long long time ago there are many different companies uh, which are you know doing consumer based e-commerce right? so you are um, able to shop a web, um, online on a website right um, for your own self you can you know use a credit card and buy things um, that's for your own personal personal use Right. Riva is saying that there is an e-commerce option, but that's more like an internal option. Right. So they use this interface, which is called a guided buying, which is always implemented if Riva buying is implemented. So guided buying interface provides an internal consumer website experience to clients. Right, because people like to have a good experience when they're shopping. They want to have uh, look at pictures. They want to look at detail of products. They want to compare items sometimes. Right, so all those things are provided internally to a company. Externally, there is many options. You don't care where they buy for their own sales, but whenever it is B two B, buying for your own office use, use guarded buying. That's what this module does. And of course, when you're buying, you got to do receiving and everything. All those things are also supported. Supported, right? And now. We said the word called B2B means you're buying for your 
office use you're not using your credit card which means you got to pay your invoice to the supplier too and that invoice payment is done through or invoice receipt and payment and you know various kind of checks or three-way match is done through the invoicing module so some of you guys might know or some of you guys might not know the three-way match three-way match is basically combining or comparing the invoice with the po and the goods receipt uh, so three-way match process happens and is supported in the invoicing module so invoicing module this module supports the receipt and reconciliation reconciliation is three-way match of invoice of supplier invoices um i think this this is probably fine when the inverse is reconciled i just want to add last bullet point on this when the inverse is reconciled it is sent to the erp like s4 hana for example not s3 s4 hana for payment processing payment is not done in ariba guys okay so these are the modules of ariba now you know ai is a big bu buzzword right now a lot of us are involved in it some of us are probably using those nice chats which are out there for from ai right um ariba naturally is trying to bring that as well right so in the sourcing what ariba try to do is in the sourcing module they have a newer ui called guided sourcing which is there in all new implementations some clients are trying to implement guided sourcing if they are using the previous version right so there is that bit of work which is also there in the market in addition to new projects and there is a bit of ai in there right? and we talk we'll talk about it in more detail you know what i mean by that so a lot of it is also ai is also looking at your you know consumer behavior your data like purchase history in the past, what you're doing, all those things that he was trying to incorporate in various modules, like sourcing, guarded buying, and so on, right? So as things come up, um, these things will continue to evolve, evolve right? And uh, what is the right balance that is still to come, of course, right? Last is not a module, it's a middleware. Managed, not manage. No, how do you, it is managed, actually. Managed spend gateway. It is so hard to remember what this is or cig which is was a very good name cloud integration gateway so this is a middleware for integrating SAP Ariba solutions with S4 HANA and with, um, well, now S4 HANA, of course, ECC as well can be integrated. I, what I mean to say is SAP ERP or S4 HANA, but nothing else, okay? So that's where this CIG is. But the other thing is, most of your projects in Ariba, they will involve SAP. As a back end, but well, SAP is a seller who sells SAP and Riga both. So, which means that in all projects, you will in, end up using CIG. The now, given that there are so many other you know middlewares out there, why to use this one? Right, and that's where the primary benefit comes. Primary benefit of this module is that it has safely saying, I'm safely saying, thirty plus standard interfaces with SAP ERP slash S4 HANA. Right? So you have so many modules, you have so many processes, you have so many documents, right? And you have your SAP business network as well, which I didn't even note down here. Right? All those things is going to be more than 30, of course. I'm saying 30 conservatively so this middleware has interfaces which are there already you don't have to write a write a code to make them work right i'll give an example for context a client which i worked on they did not use cig the reason is they had a very custom erp but they were still implementing 
you know, Ariba. So they had 65 custom interfaces, one year to build and test. That's one client. Second is a client which is having SAP backend. Um, they use CIG, they are using Ariba, and integration work done in three months. Okay, so that's a difference. And of course, cost is a big factor to it. Okay. So it is just um, made for you know the system. And it just makes things easily. And then also when it comes to the question of stability and all that, it is pretty stable too. Right? Like you create an order, you can also change them. You can change them as many times as you want, change whatever you want, for example. Whereas those custom interfaces, okay, you want to create fine. What do you want to change? You want to change this? That's one change. Change that, that's another change. So all those coding, you know, is is taken away when the CI thing comes in. Of course, in our training, we will look at the configuration because there is no process to look at in here, right? In spend gateway. Other modules, we will look at the configurations as well. Now, this is about what we will look in the training. So in our training, just to put that down for conclusion, we are looking at process. Process is for end users and configurations. From end user perspective, and system configurations from a consultant perspective. Some key points to note down. We will let's have that as a bucket. This might also help you help answer some of your questions you have. In addition, system access is provided. So you're not just looking at what I'm doing, in the live configurations I'm doing. By the way, system configurations are done live, right? They are not like a recording. All the sessions are live. I know there are some some um, institutes out there, they run recordings, that's not the case. Right? All the sessions are live and there is two-way communication, okay? It's not just me talking, you can ask questions anytime, interrupt anytime. Today is a demo session, right? Um, hence why you guys are muted, but we will soon unmute you, unmute you. System access is provided so that you not only learn, but you also practice. Yeah, that's where I think I should probably end. Raj, I can pass on to you and we can try to unmute people and take questions. So the guys, this is basically a very, very high level overview of uh, the system, uh, not the system, the uh, you know, the modules we look at cover and including the middleware in our training program and the kind of process and the interaction we will do. Somebody did clapping, really appreciate. Thanks for that, Shivam. Welcome, Manish. Uh, Manish, I have a question. Please, go ahead. Uh, the question is, uh, like as you said in the beginning, uh, that there is a integration thing that is a CIG cloud based you know, cloud integration phase, right? Yes. So, uh, like, how many things we need to configure uh, while we are um, implementing the Ariba? So that's my how first question. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. How many things we need to configure while we are implementing the Ariba? Mm -hmm. So basically, that's that that for you. I, I would like to hear from you. And the second be... thing you have. Can I answer this one first? Yeah, please. Because everybody heard it, right? So the question is, how many things do we configure or what configurations do we do or what level of configurations we do in the various modules and the middleware we talk about? Or did you talk about modules or just middleware? I'm talking about the modules. Suppose if you talk about various only S2, so yeah, source 2K. Mm -hmm. Basically, Ariba, like there is a downstream and upstream as well. Because, yes. Yes, yes. So buying invoicing yeah. is downstream. I didn't bring that word just for, you know, it might throw some people out today, right? But we'll cover that in more detail what it means. Okay. Yeah, so Shivam, um, see all these modules involve configurations. Mm -hmm. When I say configurations means in order to make the process work, whether it is an approval process or it is some other kind of process, right? You know, all those processes uh, that need to be working in the system, there's a distinct way which Ariba manages them. 
Yes. And there is some difference between upstream and downstream. And there is different levels of configurations you will do in upstream and downstream. Like for example, in buying, you will do catalog configurations, right? Um, you will try to understand what are the various other data loads you need to know so, so that the system works accurately, right? Uh, in upstream, you will have to work on the approval process. And also downstream, you have to work on approval process. In upstream, you have to also understand what the client process is. Um, and there is, you know, a, a task management process that you have to build between sourcing and contracts and also in SLP. So that's about various modules. There is, I would say, if you're talking about percentages, maybe 30% is configuration, rest is like basically it's a cloud solution. So it's set up and ready to go. 30% you still have to do. Right? Okay. When you talk about CIG, I think it's not 30%, it's less than that. It's probably like 10%. Or maybe 15 percent reason is all the interfaces are good to go you got to make sure that you set your connection with the backend system fill the right details there is a bit of configuration you have to do in sap as well right you have to go yes. to spr and various other places and you know in the cloud integration gateway now called, called management gateway node and you got to go through make sure you build your connection and all your setup from there depending on what modules you want to collect right so i would say there is probably 10 percent configuration when it comes to middleware rest all is taken care by the system design uh, and architecture. And in other modules, I would say it's like 30%. Okay. Does it answer? Yeah, yeah. You have answered. Okay. What's your next question? So uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, on a re uh, sorry, in an SLP, supplier life cycle part, uh, yeah. there are already more than 7 uh, billion suppliers. So those data are getting stored over the portal, I mean, over the server. Whenever we are going to implement the server, it will automatically bing or we need to do something for that. Or it will be automatically come while we are implementing the software. That's a great question. So SAP Business Network is a portal for suppliers. Yes. Right. So you are, if you are, if I'm a supplier, right, I'm there, I have my own data, right? Uh, which is my data. Then um, what else think of it, another way to look at it is, it's like Facebook friends or you know Instagram. Instagram you do following, so it's not so much of Instagram. Think of LinkedIn or Facebook. So you have a person whom you know who's on LinkedIn, you make we get connection yeah. with them. The moment you connect with them, you see some, some of their data. So that data also will flow to your SLP module as well to some extent. So you are able to see suppliers public profile. But you also want to make sure that supplier is providing you the information that you need for your own organization. And that kind of varies by company to company. So I would say that if there's two companies, then there's information needed for them from the suppliers. It's probably going to be like 40% commonality, but 60% is still going to be different. So that varies by company to company. So suppliers will still have to provide some data so that there is that full sync of data happen with you. All 7 million doesn't come automatically because firstly, you don't need all 7 million to work with. You'll need like a handful, like yes. 2,000, depending yeah, on which, that's the event, which industry. Yeah. I was just thinking like, suppose if 7, like 7 million supplier automatically onboarded in our system without like, because to operate any business, we don't need to onboard like 7 billion supplier. We just, we hardly need like a 2 lakh, 3 lakh kind of supplier, yeah, approximately 10 lakh supplier to operate the global business. So why we need to keep such like the large numbers of data in our system? Why we so need we to fill the storage? Yeah. Why right. we need to fill uh, full the storage? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we don't have to, right? As you mentioned, yeah. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome, Shiva. I think uh, other folks have some questions too. I see one hand up. Maybe we can raise hands and then we can go from there. Uh, Siddharth, please go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Uh... Yeah, uh, hi, Manish. Uh, Siddharth here. So I had three questions. Uh, one was regarding, you know, uh, why is in, uh, internal inventory or catalog management not supported in Ariva? One thing. Catalog management is supported. Catalog and management is supported. Inventory is not supported. Any reasons why that is not particularly supported? Uh, let's say the company already has an inventory and if they want to, you know, uh, manage that. Yeah. So let me ask you, if a company has inventory, how do they normally buy the inventory? Through PRPO, right? But they also run something called replenishment or MRP, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a very stable program, mature program, which all the ERPs have. Okay. So Ariba doesn't have an, you know, um, a replenishment system or ERP 
sorry, MRP uh, program, which runs the inventory. It's like duplicate effort. Why to do all that when there is a well established system? That's like a strategy of the company. Oh, okay. And the second would be on, you know, uh, will real time business case scenarios be covered in this training uh, on, you know, best practices, why we are doing what we are doing in the configuration? Oh, yeah, 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 of course. And of course, those are going to come only from me, right? The reason okay. is uh, I'm going to speak from my experiences. And okay. I won't say anything wrong. I will only say something which is like worked in the market, of course. Yeah, sure. And uh, the last question was, you know, how flexible is the configuration of Ariba as per the requirement? It's mostly the standard process that is available or the, uh, you know, clients can configure according to their requirements as well. How flexible it yeah. is. Uh, in right. So SLP, sourcing contracts, highly flexible. Approval flow, most flexible in the world, I think, if you compare any other system. So many things you can configure, no need to customize in approval flow, very, very, uh, you know, custom, not customizable, configurable. So approval flow for PR, uh, for, you know, any other proof for you can think about like invoice and everything. All those can be done very, very, uh, to a very high level of configuration. Um, I think that's pretty much it. O overall, in upstream, which is SLP and sourcing and contracts, you can configure as per the client's process and downstream approval process can also be configured as needed. Okay. That helps, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Siddharth. Uh, so next we have Anu. Uh, I think it's probably Anu. Yes, hi, Manish. Mm -hmm. uh, Manish, my question is regarding, uh, like, uh, I have experience into supplier enablement into Ariba as end user, and uh, I also have some knowledge of SAP MM. So to work as Ariba consultant, uh, do we really need uh, uh, SAP MM knowledge or, I mean, is it mandatory to have SAP knowledge or it is added advantage? Yeah, so it is not mandatory, it's nice to have. When I say nice to have means if you look in the PRPO, you do the same in SAP as well, PRPO, right? Similarly, you do invoicing in SAP. So some of those things are common. They'll be a little bit easy to understand. But if you have no background, it's totally fine. The way we approach the program is that, hey, you are new, you know nothing. Like in, a, mm -hmm. in a, one of our training, we had a person who was from marketing background. In the training, we had a person who was from a teaching background. Right? And uh, one, one person there was a, like a professor in a university. Right? So there is different people from different walks of life who come to training. And we will make sure you guys you know, get the right knowledge and the right experience in it. Yeah. Uh, so Manish, just to add few words over here. Uh, yeah, Rash, uh, to, to, uh, yeah. And those whoever are uh, going to be the participants of our training, so we make sure like they have a little understanding on the procurement process. So that's a little mandatory over here. So if you are coming from different walks of life also, but it's mandatory like you must understand what is you know the basic of procurement process. Otherwise, it's going to be uh, very difficult for you to understand the terminology over here. Yeah. Am I right, Manish? If, um, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, some knowledge I think um, is is beneficial, definitely, as Araj mentioned. Yes. Because what happens is, like, let's say we have a batch of 15 people, and let's say 14 are having some background, one has no background, then one person will ask more questions, and it can a little bit slows down a little bit, right? Um, but those scenarios have happened, and then hence why probably Araj is saying that. Okay, so you have pretty good understanding, uh, you know, Anu, so I think we have already talked uh, offline also. So yes, I think like it's really going to be very helpful for you because you know most of the processes and this training, I think, is going to be really beneficial for you to, you know, catch up your career into more progressiveness. Yeah, that I can assure you in this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any other queries, Anu? No, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So next is uh, Ahmed. Can you just unmute yourself? Uh, hi. Good evening. How are you? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm um, audible. Yes, Ahmed, we can hear you. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm Ahmed. I am coming from uh, uh, MM and above uh, a theory background. Uh, so. My question will be on this uh, area. Can you, for example, uh, the payment, as you mentioned, Mr. Manish, thank you for this. Uh, before of that, thank you for this uh, introduction. 
uh, you very nice introduction and I, I attended a couple of videos for you and uh, this encouraged me uh, to join here in Ali. Uh, for uh, uh, supplier, uh, the sourcing module and SLP, uh, the payment will be in S4 HANA. That means uh, each supplier that I am dealing with in Ariba have to be created in uh, as a business partner in S4 HANA, right? That is correct. Okay. And also, in any integration with MM, for example, we have automatic sourcing in MM and, uh, uh, for example, uh, source list, uh, contracts, and uh, uh, info record. Is this any integration here between Ariba and uh, this sourcing uh, in S4 HANA? So or... source, list, source list integration is not there, but info record integration, contract integration is there. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 one more question. Sorry, just uh, uh, in 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 Ariba. Uh, also, the integration I have. There is another middleware called BTP, and here you are talking about CIG. Uh, See, BTP is a business uh, technology not... platform. It's different. It's like a cloud yeah. version of ABAPing, right? It's different, right? It's not for. It's for yes. like developers. You probably know, right? You're ABAPer as well. Yeah. 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 This is for developers and for enhancements and something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So See, like I, I, I can... there is no programming you're doing there, by the way. It's mainly configuration. CIG. But if you have ABAP knowledge, hey, you can do some other, um, you know, stuff in integration. We'll talk about some of those examples as well in our, you know, training. Like, what are some of the things you can pick up if you have that skill as well? So it's an added skill, I think. It's not necessary, but it's like one of the skills which is, can be handy in some scenarios. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, last question. Uh, these videos will be uploaded, uh, will be accessible to our side? Yes, yes. In addition yes. to that. So, Ahmed, Ahmed oh. to you and to everyone, I just want to update it. Like all the session recordings which you are, uh, uh, what which the sessions which you are attending live okay going forward also so all the sessions are going to be recorded and we are going to share these sessions to you guys in a very secure folder okay so all the sessions recorded sessions as well as the material we have standard material the configuration something so we are going to share all those things with you guys so it will be in a form of uh, google drive so we are going to share with you and this google drive will be accessible to you for lifelong Okay, thank you. I, I'm I'm finished. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Uh, Aparna? Yeah. Aparna, would you please unmute yourself and come up with your queries? Yeah. Yes. Hi, Manish. Uh, I'm Aparna here. Thanks for the demo class. Uh, Hi, I'm having the background of SAP MM and SRM. And I want to know if the course also covers the integration part with the uh, um, S4 HANA sourcing and procurement wherever is relevant. So, like you will be giving us a bigger picture of the integration and the process happening between the S4 and yes, yes. Ariba. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So we have a dedicated session. We will talk about you know basically every possible integration scenario that can happen between Ariba and S4 HANA for sourcing and procurement. Yeah, we'll cover that. Yeah. Yeah, and also you will be uh, guiding us. Uh, the steps in the implementation project and the kind of support tickets we get generally in the Ariba. So you will be covering those things. Yes, I'll be covering those things. Um, see, support tickets, it depends what you mean by that. Like, you mean like you're working in a support project and you get some things to work on. That's what you meant? Yeah, yeah. What kind of tickets we get generally if it is a support Ariba project? And like yes, and, yes, uh, of course. Yeah. Of course, of course, yeah. Those things, all those things. Like what things C support basically means if there's a bug and you want to fix it. So what kind of bugs can happen? Yeah, Agreed. yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. To add your what is the duration? Uh, I just want to know what's the duration of the course and what is the batch time? So the duration. Is, yes, yes. The duration of the course is approximately 40 to 45 hours. Okay. And before that, I just want to uh, answer your the first the the previous questions question which you asked like 
you ask a very yeah. generic question of Parna. Okay, it's a good question, but it's a very generic question. Which kind of tickets do we get? So it totally depends upon your business. Okay, if you're, uh, you know, working for a product-based company or if you're working for a service-based company, which kind of tickets are you going to handle? Usually, you see, like the Ariba project goes in a way like first we are going to have a proper implementation. If you're working with a working behalf of an implementation partner, okay, so you are going to do the complete implementation. Then after there will be six months of hypercare support going to be. If they want to extend mm -hmm. the support, there is an agreement between the you know the company and the client and the implementation partner. Okay, so in, mostly what happens is like if you are a part of client like if you are working as a, uh, as a resource in the uh, client side then there is chances of you will be in the support mostly okay so in that case you'll be getting the tickets according to your business requirements so it's going to be very difficult to tell us like which kind of tickets probably you may expect so it's purely related with the business but most of the things we'll try to cover it up standards one but not all of them so don't have much expectation mm -hmm. in, um, in terms of standard ones i'm only expecting the standard ones yes yes the yes, basic yes, ones yes. Yes. standard ones will Great cover yes absolutely yeah. yes that, that's going to be covered and the duration of the training is for 40 to 45 hours and we are going to cover approximately in five weeks of time and the sessions timings are going to be 7 30 pm to I mean, sometimes it's going to be three hours from then. Or sometimes if the topic is a little lengthy, then we are also stretching to three and a half hours also sometimes with a proper break in between. So properly, we are going to cover each and everything with hands-on configuration. So Manish is such a, Manish is such a patience, uh, you know, mentor who is going to answer most of your questions. So unless until you understand the things, he's not going to move further. Okay. Yeah. So thanks to Manish for this one. So we have covered so many and we have very good feedback so far uh, with all the participants. Okay, everyone are so happy and they got working already onboarded and they're doing their projects without anybody's help actually. So that's the way of training you'll be getting over here. Yeah, thank you. So is there any more queries? Uh, I think we yeah. have. Pai Payali has his uh, her hand up. Pai, yeah. okay, please go ahead, please. Yeah, hi Manish, this is Payali. So thank you for this session, Manish. I have a question here. So I'm an MM consultant. So my question here is, what about the good receipt? So we know that for um, for being an SAP consultant, uh, MM consultant, I know that in SAP we go ahead and create the GR, right? So yeah. what about here in Ariba? Is it uh, it will happen in Ariba only? and not in SAP? Uh, I think it depends. We were saying that, let's talk about what we we're talking about first, right? We said mm -hmm. that in the guided bank, you will shop, let's say, of a catalog. You'll create a PR, mm -hmm. PR goes through approval. I'm explaining because you have the background, right? And then it goes to yeah. PO. PO is created automatically in Ariva, by the way, right? Then do, yeah. you will do a GR. In Ariva, because you have Ariva module already, buying module already, yeah? And in that case, most cases you will do GR in Ariva. There are clients who want to say that, yeah, I'll do GR in SAP. That is also possible. So both is possible. A GR is possible both. in Ariba also and in SAP also. Like if it is an ERP system, we can do it in a ERP system also, right? It depends. Yeah, if the client wants to do that, that's definitely possible to do. Yeah. Okay, fine. Fine. That's all, Manish. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay, anybody else? Uh, sorry, I have one more question, Manish. Uh, like uh, Ariba also supports the direct procurement or it is only it, for indirect procurement? So if you look in these modules like supplier management, contract management, sourcing, so these do not matter what type of procurement you do because they are not even to the PR level or PO level. They are for like basically sourcing and then contracts and supplier data management. So these modules can be used whether it is direct or indirect supplier, it doesn't matter. But buying, guided buying, invoicing, this is primarily for indirect. Okay. Yeah. And uh, will you be guiding us for, if you want to do any certification in Adiba? Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So all the, you know, training is, uh, just I want to tell you one more thing I'd hear. Okay, so most of the participants who has gone through the training, so they could uh, clear uh, the majorly the two certifications. Okay, there are totally six certifications in SAP Ariba. Okay, we are have we are we are having here total six certifications. Okay, sourcing, procurement, uh, contract, SLP, uh, SSC, and uh, mm, I think there is one more. Uh, 
yeah i'm forgetting that one so there are totally six certifications are there here in short i can say so most prominent among these six certifications are sourcing we call it like upstream so sourcing and another is p2p that is downstream so these two are very prominent ones so i can say like most of the people who are willing to appear for the exam 95 percent of the people got cleared in the exam and if you anybody are having interest in certification exam please connect me separately i'll be guiding you in a better way yeah so that definitely the support is going to be there if somebody is willing to do the certification with 100 percent guarantee i can assure you yeah okay so we have akira go ahead please Hi Manish. Now I'm uh, I'm audible. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thanks for your demo session. Yeah. First of all, uh, I just have a question on means regarding the configuration. Means you told about the uh, configuration. So I just want to know means how much depth we are going in the configuration. How much depth we can go in the detail with that configuration at where, what level for the SLP template configuration and that one's things i just, just SLP or you mean overall yeah overall yeah see whatever you can think that you can configure in real life we'll cover that the examples we use to configure are they're going to come from actual projects i've done i will i will not say hey, this is the client or something i'll pick up like one or two pro, uh, you know clients i've worked with and mix up something and come up with some scenarios and then we'll go from there for configuration yeah i mean so so there is a point. different so we'll yeah as uh, we know Okay. As we know, there is a different type of uh, business requirements uh, as depends on the business types. So uh, there will be the banking sector and the uh, industry sector, yeah, chemical sector. Absolutely. So the it depends on that. Company to company, but we also got to keep yeah. in mind we are dealing with source to pay, and source to pay is a process in itself, right? There are certain similarities you will see depending on whichever industry the client is in. There are certain similarities yeah. which are there, certain trends which are there. So we'll pick them and we'll build on them. Right. You see what I mean? How, how much of the means how much of the uh, that regarding the configuration we are picked for the during see, training? I, I think it's hard to say it's like like what weight it is going to be. But it's like everything you can think about configuration. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll talk about that and we'll cover that. Yeah, depth in the sense you see, uh, this is a very generic question I can say, Kiran. Okay, yeah. so we always consider our training to be very fruitful for the participants who are availing our training. They should be confident enough, number one, to attend the interview and answer most of the queries, most of the questions in the thing. So they should be, you know, demonstrating themselves as they have already worked it because you are having a support of. Uh, uh, the server access also which we are giving so we are doing the practice so whichever mm -hmm. the scenarios manish is showing in the training actually so those scenarios you are repeating by seeing the videos so you will be having a full confidence in this one so first goal of ours for, out of this training is like you should clear the interviews if at all you are looking for the job but you see most of the people like six, uh, 40 to 50 percent of the people are there here who already but they want to fill the gaps so they should work confidently on most of the scenarios because you see Ariba itself is a very it's like i can't say very bigger kind of uh, like an erp but to do the implementation from end-to-end -end implementation like upstream downstream and integration it will take at least 18 months uh, yes. you know deploying at least four 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 different resources i can say so we yeah, can yeah, find well, that okay, much of depth, the, yeah that much of depth in this but we are covering all the standard one, keeping the experience. Manish is having very rich experience here. So he'll be having the ideas, like which are the projects are going to be. So he's just demonstrating the cream out of those projects. So you'll be having more confidence. So that level of uh, depth we are covering in this one. That you'll be very much confident enough. Okay, Kiran? Yeah, okay. I just have another question for Manish. Uh, regarding, yeah, I need to discuss, uh, yeah. I need to uh, know means uh, how much there is a uh, chances means uh, uh, vacancies available for us means is it uh, means uh, now I am from document background means last 15 10 years I'm working from that background so is it okay yeah. to come in this course and and how is the chance to for uh, means how is the future for me means in this so modern, I think you said modern, Kiran, you have uh, you are from procurement background, like not like yes. a consultant, but more like a buyer, for example. Yeah, end user type. End user. So I think there is a great scope for you. 
because if you're a buyer, then you know the process. So Iraj was saying that a little bit of understanding is helpful, but you know the process in depth already, right? Yeah. You, you just don't yeah. know the system, right? So which means you can yeah. pick up, you can talk to clients more easily um, yes. because you understand both sides. Then. Anything else, Kiran? Yeah, but uh, yeah, means can I treat means it's a fresher kind of things in this uh, module, so in this uh, region. So uh, can I get a, um, opportunities, more opportunities? What kind of opportunities for me available in currently? I think it depends where you are located. Araj, would you like to answer that? Yeah, yes, 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 Manish, I'll answer it, um, uh, Kiran. So here you see, this is again, it depends upon, it's a very generic question, I can say again. So first thing I want to tell you, you are in 10 years of experience, okay? So uh, yeah. you can't say like I'm having a 10 years of business understanding, business knowledge. I worked as a business consultant in procurement side, but I have learned Ariba, I want to get in to Ariba as a fresh air. Nobody, I'm telling you very honestly and bluntly here, nobody is going to entertain any resource who is a fresher here, okay? It means like he's not having, not even worked in the tool here. No doubt you are having a lot of uh, business understanding, but if you are showing yourself like you haven't worked it before in this particular tool, it's going to be very difficult for you to get the job, okay? Unless until you are going to get observed in your current company, then it's going to be there. Then what's the solution over here? So at least you need to manage your experience like three to four years you work in a, uh, uh, you know, in SAP side of side of it, and through our uh, training, you are going to fill that particular gap. I can say, then only you can, you know, eligible to attend the interviews. There you are going to show your knowledge, and all from there you can take it forward. That is first thing. The second question is like, you see, there are a uh, lot of openings here. You just try by yourself, not to you, to everyone. I'm saying to you, you just tweak your resume and put a riba and uh, you know, at least three to four years of experience there, and put some rele relevant project. In a week, at least you'll be getting two to three calls in India, I'm talking about, okay? And in European region also, there are many, and Middle East and US region also, there are jobs for three to four years only. If you're putting... Yeah, that's why, that's, what, that's why I'm telling you. Means uh, yeah. there's only vacancy for the experienced guy. Means... Uh, exactly. There is no... Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's, so, the, that's the point. Yeah, means uh, you told me, uh, like, uh, we need. I need to manage the three to four years experience uh, with the you Ariba one. So how are you able to? Yeah. That I can't tell you. <laughs> you just connect me separately. Okay. I'll just guide you on that part. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right then. Thank you so. Thanks, Kiran. Uh, we have another. Uh, I means like Siddharth. Start, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one question I had was: Do we have any client partnerships where we can, you know, partner post this training for any implementations? uh it depends like you see we are you see like what happened i just tell you the background of our training since we are uh, giving the training since 2017 a lot of resources are being trained by us and out of which a lot of you know project managers delivery managers are there so the thing is like if they have any requirements in their organization for like three years or two years or sometimes even for the freshers also so they feel like they will connect us okay but I'm not going to assure you 100% is going to happen. If we are getting the, you know, any any requirement from our, our end, so our participants are going to be the first preference for us. Okay, so we are going, we are, end of this training, we are going to create a WhatsApp group also. Usually what happens is like every batch of ours is consist of at least 10 to 15 participants. Okay, in between 10 to 15 participants are going to be there. So for every batch, we are going to create a WhatsApp group. So among the WhatsApp groups, we are going to post the, uh, openings, if at all, there are genuine openings are coming to us, which will come directly to us, not through any sources. So from there, you are going to be picked up, but there is no promise at all, I can say here. Yeah. See that. Yeah, this helps. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Because you see, guys, we are very honest and very open. Is guide anyone? Because we understand. Because you see, Manish is having more than 18 years of experience. I have more than 16 years of experience in SAP only. So we know the pain of it. Like, it's not, uh, you know, we don't want to bluff the people and say, okay, this is going to happen. We don't want to create the expectations here. What is right, we'll say only that thing. Okay. So that you'll be very clear before you are going ahead with this one. Our main goal here is to, is not to deviate you from actual things. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, again, who is there? Ramesh? 
five minutes. Thanks for the uh, introductory sessions. I have two questions for you. Um, yeah. Uh, like the first one is, uh, do we focus on SEC uh, in this training? You see SCC, Supply Chain uh, supply Collaboration? Chain, yeah. See, yeah. Supply Chain Collaboration is, see, do you, have you heard about commerce automation? Uh, not really, no. So supply, it's a, like a buzzword, basically, you can say, Supply Chain Collaboration. It's not really, you know, a module, right? So it is mm -hmm. basically sending your transactions and receiving your status updates right from your SAP system to your Oriva network. This is a bit of integration setup that is done. Right. We don't cover that like in live because that's not an Ariba solution. It's SAP. But what we mm -hmm. what I also do is like as I go through integration session, I talk about those scenarios in detail, what what all transactions are supported. Then when I go to the system side and SAP side of things, I do I show you guys briefly like hey, this is all this is where you will configure all those things. Okay. So in a way we do cover it, you can say yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for that. And the second question is uh, are we going to focus only uh, the session from S4 perspective or uh, do we uh, touch base on other uh, generic variant configurations as well? For example, like for uh, the accounting combinations for uh, SAP side, we have certain combinations and for uh, other generic variances, we have other certain uh, fields, right? So uh, are we going to compare it uh, in terms of both SAP and other generic variants? Yeah, so we have an SAP variant Ariba system, right? Which means what you guys will see in the screen is SAP variant. But hey, what is the difference between SAP and the generic variant? As you mentioned, some accounting fields, they might not call a plant a plant. They might call it like a, like something else, right? They might not call it company code. They might call that something else. It's just be, basically terminology changes. Process is still the same. Configuration is still the same. Some fields are labeled something else from you know, consultant and end user perspective. And of course, middleware will change. We will not cover any other middleware. We are covering CIG because it is the primary you know, uh, middleware that is used for connecting with SAP S4 on and that's where all the projects are covered. Okay, Manish, thanks. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Because we want to make sure that you guys, you know, at the end of the day, learn something which is gonna help you get a job too, right? Um, I don't see any other but hand no. up. I Aparna, yes. I think she so, Aparna, spoke already. you want to ask? Okay, okay. I just lowered the Yeah, I have one more question. Oh, she has. Uh, Sorry. We want to know whether will you help in uh, building up our resume with Ariba experience also? Because I have a lot of experience in MM and SRM. But, you know, if I want uh, uh, to look for a job in Ariba, I need to put some projects, right, for Ariba. So, will you be helping? I will help you out on that one, Aparna. Aparna, I will help you out on that one. Okay, and also I need your uh, um, suggestion and guidance. I was a little confused if I have to take a coaching on S4 HANA sourcing and procurement or if I should go to Ariba because um, I'm, I have experience in SAP MM and SRM. So, if you, so you see, like I'll tell you a very straightforward thing here. Okay, so you see, yeah. if you want to be a pure procurement consultant going forward. Okay, so I suggest you to go with SAP Ariba, which is sole procurement tool and more focused on the procurement processes. Okay, it's having more uh, features and uh, advanced features than any other ERP. Okay, and in SAP roadmap, if you're seeing the SAP Ariba roadmap, they are basically trying to improve a lot. Now they have already added a new artificial intelligence part over here, Ariba discovery, and we have the Ariba network here, which is having more than 7 million uh, onboarded suppliers. So there are so many features and SAP is more focusing on this area. Because to be honest, if you're saying there are, you know, four different products doing the same role over here, uh, like procurement, I can say. If you're talking about MM, it's doing part of procurement here. The SRM also is doing the same. S4 HANA sourcing and procurement also doing the same and Ariba also doing the same. So going forward, they are planning to make Ariba as the sole procurement solution with a cloud integration. You see, there are a lot of things, even like yesterday I was discussing with Chivam. Okay, I think he's there in the session. So we, are, we had a very long discussion. So yes. going forward, uh, uh, yeah, going forward, you see everything is going to be electronic invoicing. So once you are talking about electronic invoicing, definitely the things are going to be here for, uh, there is going to be an edge for SAP Ariba only. Okay, so Ariba is going to be having more openings. Okay, you see, whenever you are choosing any job, any career, so you should think of certain prospects in your life. So whether this tool is going to be sustainable for a very longer period of time or not, whether the job competition is going to be more or less, and the satisfaction of the job is good or not, 
and your pay that is also very important so that's going to be increased or not so i can say like if you're talking about for hana sourcing and procurement those who are from uh, sorry mn side most of the people went in there already so it's kind of you know so many people there is one job opening is there uh, like one is to 10 ratio is going to be there for this one so i'm not influencing you here i'm just telling you the facts you can check it out also so in that sense if you want to make yourself like a pure procurement consultant then advisable to go over here but you are not going to left, leave s4 hana also you see manish is working in both the things he's working in s4 hana also and ariba also sourcing and procurement and ariba right manish if you can give yeah. more inside of it you can give more uh, manish thank you this is my suggestion you correct me if i'm wrong i think it's it's that's a great explanation Raja. i think that's uh, exactly it yeah, yeah. we will have an thank you thank you ariba. I said that you are saying something. I said that if anyone needs support for S4 HANA solution, then I can also provide the support. And to end, whether we are going to implement, whether we are going to for the support. Okay. Support. Okay. Great. 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 See that. Really nice to know. I'll be in touch. Thanks, Shiva. I think it was Shiva. Excellent. That, uh, you want to go next? I think you have your hand up. Uh, yeah, another question I had uh, will be uh, covering the client level configurations in this, like chart of accounts and the other things. See, chart of accounts is where it's a finance concept. It's done uh, in finance so, module. Okay, so basically for the payment, uh, you know, if we are interfacing with the payment module, will that not be a consideration here, uh, like in invoicing and all? No, no, this is not FI module training, guys. FI module training is different. It's not. This is Ariba training. Right. So okay, we will, one more thing. We'll be, now, yeah, please go ahead. Sorry to interview. Sorry to interview Manish here. Okay, I think like see that you're asking like first thing I want to make it clear you'll answer your you'll get all the answers. Ariba is not a part of ERP. That's it. So the simple answer for this one is Ariba is not the part of ERP. So eventually if you want to settle down your accounts part, so you need to connect to the ERP and from there you're going to do the all settlements here. You're, you're going to connect with your FI, FI part or S4 and a finance part over there. So here we can't do anything. This is not an ERP. Yeah, it's not a part of ERP. Correct. Yeah. So there is no no question of any financial uh, postings over here directly. Yeah. Indirectly, of course, it's going to be. So there is no direct financial postings here. Am I right, Manish? Thank you. That's right. And, and you know, there is some finance data which will come from, like accounting data, which come from SAP to Ariba. Of course, that is part of Ariba solution, and we'll cover that. But any finance configuration which are in the ERP, that's not scope of our, our training here. Okay, at least the integration between this, uh, these ERPs, will be we covering that as well? Of course, integration is covered. Yeah. Invoice integration is part of it. Yeah. Okay, this helps. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah. Thanks. Uh, we have Neha. Neha, please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, guys. Thank you for answering uh, everything in quite detail. Um, <clears throat> I have this question that uh, uh, for the last uh, three years, I am working in UK. And I've got experience in like uh, merchandising, buying and supply chain. Uh, but right now I work more on guided buying and catalogs. And uh, <clears throat> I work uh, very heavily with Deloitte um, uh, functional consultants. And my role sort of become like a business consultant. So um, might be a silly question that, you know, in another three to five years, mm -hmm. um, I would want to come back to India. So um, if you know that India needs more of functional consultants or business consultants like where does the market sort of lie or is there even a even a difference there um because things work so differently in india uh any idea around that i mean i personally want to be a bus um, business consultant and um not a functional it's, one per se it's an iraj question iraj you might want to take that <clears throat> uh yes yes neha yeah, this is, you see, like in India, there are different rules here. So since you are saying like you have a almost very, how much experience you said, sorry, 10, 10 plus years of experience, right? In procurement um, side. Yeah. 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 Then. So your experience is very good here. So, you know, a lot of things in procurement process, like how to negotiate and how to do the bidding and the sourcing process and P2P process. So most of the things you are having, I hope like it's, you are having an in-depth of knowledge in this. So. Coming to India, learning this particular tool, tool. So maybe you'll be considered in a very higher. You not be working as a, you know, like a Ariba resource who is sitting and doing the configurations. So it'll mm -hmm. be more. You can get involved in the higher kind of role, which involves negotiating with the client, 
your business uh, you know uh, stakeholders i can say stakeholders and the clients and uh, you know how you are going to uh, uh, you know update your team you are going to you know talk to your team give give them a lot of ideas kind of i can say i can't say the solution architect level but yes. kind of you know you will be helping in the solutioning the business you are going you need to have a proper understanding of ariba tool and you know the business so that's going to be a very good combination here so you can talk very nicely you know the uh, what are the capabilities of ariba going to be and with mm -hmm. these capabilities you can map with the business so that's a very important part here so these kind of roles are definitely are there in india so i just want to ask you like which part of india if you are coming to so is it like in uh, um, Pune, uh, sure. Bangalore, uh, Noida. So sure, yeah, um, I worked in Mumbai itself, and I work for MNCs, and uh, I worked on MM module great. mostly as an great, end user. Great. Yeah. Great, great. So, so I yeah, wish to come Pune back to Mumbai. Mumbai only. Is, uh, yes, yes. I'm from Pune basically. Okay. So in Pune and Mumbai, mm -hmm. we have very good because you see, Maharashtra is always a business state. I can say so. There are a lot of you know mm -hmm. things, and apart from I'm no, I'm talking about not from product. Uh, based company, uh, uh, you know, side. But if you're talking about service-based companies, there are a lot many roles are there. Okay. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Cool. For sure, it is there. And but the thing yeah. is, like, uh, I, I really appreciable. It's really appreciable. You are having a very good understanding in the procurement side. But you need to learn the tool in depth. Then only your value is going to be increased over here in this thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've got, uh, I've been working two years uh, with Ariba, but then I thought that, you know, I need to shape my profile. And, and honestly, trust me, mm -hmm. India has some of the best tutorials. You can't get these kind of tutorials anywhere else. And I've tried everything. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, for, uh, yes. and you know me from last yeah. month. I'm, I'm, I'm the same Neha. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I remember. Okay. Exactly. I was thinking, man, Neha, <laughs> I think she has been in the batch before. Yeah, yeah I missed in December student. once I, as I'm covering it here. Yeah. Okay, great. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. That builds a lot of confidence. Thank yeah. Thank you, Neha. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Exactly. I would also like to address one thing about uh, Asraj and Manis. So basically, yesterday we had a long conversation with Asraj sir. So it's a really nice to have a discussion with you guys. And thank you so much sir, for being a genuine and giving a upfront, uh, straightforward answer. And that is a really amazing thing. Usually people try to pull in a particular uh, uh, I mean, umbrella kind of activity. So uh, that's not is uh, that's not here. Uh, that's really amazing from you guys. And thank you so much for that. And I believe thank being you. a human being, being a human being, it's our responsibility to uh, paint a clear picture about the situation and scenario with some facts and like assumption, I guess, is kind of prediction kind of uh, information. So that we must do. Uh, thank you so much for that. You're welcome, Shivam. Thank you Thanks. so much, uh, Shivam really appreciate your you know things and i i'm so happy yeah you are very right because we really don't want to you know this is this is not even in any other parts also but this is a matter of your career so it's our responsibility to you know guide you in a proper way you see we we, we don't want to pull anyone because automatically you see like people will with the reference mouth of reference they'll commit so no any anybody else you go and check any other videos from any other institute or any other company Nobody is going to provide you this in depth of understanding. I'm not blaming them, but you see, and also at the same time, no, there won't be one or two participants. Maybe there won't be any 15, 20, 30 participants. Today, you see, we, we had almost 25 participants over there. Why they are coming? Because of the quality only. If you're maintaining the things, automatically they'll come. And we don't misguide anyone over here. Yeah. Thank you so much. The trust you are having, guys. I really appreciate on this one. And going forward, we want to we'd like to put the same trust till end of the sessions. Yeah. Thank you so much. And we have Nihal. Nihal, you want to uh, ask anything? Yeah, you ping me separately. Yeah. Nihal, please unmute yourself and please go ahead with your query. Uh, Nihal's mic is not working, Iraq. So oh, he has not working. Yeah. His, like... his query in the uh, chat window. If you can just read it okay. to Manish. Not... Sure. I, I think um, it's saying. This is Nihal. There are there is some okay. My question is: I have been working in a trading company, so we have been working in Tally ERP software. It is easy. Is it easy to upgrade my technical knowledge to SAP Riva without basic knowledge? Of? Absolutely. Yeah. See, at the end of the day, what is ERP used for? Um, maybe I should ask you: Are you from procurement, Nihal? Oh, but you can't answer. Okay, he did, just did. If you are from procurement, then you understand the basic procurement process and you understand, you know, various kind of 
um, words I use like sourcing, contract, PRPO, all those things. So yeah, it's going to be relatively easy for you because at a bare minimum, you have the basic knowledge which Arish was talking about. So for you, transitioning is naturally easy and possible. Thank you. And there was one question we missed, Manish, for Gautam. Okay, he asked initially. Gautam, if you are there, I'm just uh, repeating your question, which you put it up in the chat window. I have same question as, uh, uh, okay, I'm a fresher. So is it okay to start with Ariba rather starting from MM? Uh, yes, you can first to answer your second question first. Yeah, you can start directly from Ariba and without any knowledge of mm directly you can start Ariba because you see what happens is like indeed i can say one more with my experience i am telling to you learning Ariba is easier for freshers rather the person who is coming from mm side okay it looks little you know uh, different for you guys but you see mm we are used to certain specific pro processes and specific tasks we are doing it performing over there but Ariba is performing the same tasks and it may not perform most of the tasks which MM can perform. So we'll be having a chaotic situation over here. Oh, here we can perform and here we are unable to perform. So that's going to be a difficult part. But as a fresher, if you're starting directly from Ariba, it's going to be easier for you to learn it. But uh, if you're a fresher, means I'm not very clear about which kind of fresher you're having. Do you have any gap of two to three years? If you are having a gap of two to three years, definitely you can put some experience and you can try your luck over here. Yeah. But if you're totally fresh graduates coming and you are from India, I don't advise you to go ahead with it. Yeah. But if you want to keep it for your understanding, mo most of the time what happens like a lot of engineering graduates are there who are very good in understanding the things. They want to keep up the skill sets. Like once there is some sort of, you know, companies are coming for the, you know, uh, their recruitment processes. If they are showing like I have already got trained in Ariba, so there are high chances for them to be get recruited. So this is also one of the facts I'm telling to you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Arach. I think uh, we are out of questions now, looks like. Yeah. So guys, fine. If you are having any queries, you can open up your mic and you can ask it. If, if not, like we can conclude the session for the day. And we have the session, the first session, where we are going to see all the configurations, starting with sourcing, I guess, right, Manish? So we'll start yes, with the sourcing. Yes, tomorrow's going to be sourcing, so, yeah. So we are going to see everything hands on over there in the system and we are going to go further from there. Yeah. Thank you so much guys. Really appreciate it. And hi, uh, I just had yes. one question for Manish. So, uh, so I am from currently based in USA and doing my masters. So I wanted to know from Manish, what does the market look like for SAP Ariba currently in US, uh, particularly? Pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. As Araj was saying, there's a future for Ariba. SAP has a plan for Ariba. So there are new projects coming out um in in us as well yes okay and and do we have any types there in us particularly i, have, I think that's yeah. a question see, for I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh we have in atlanta georgia okay we have a very good type okay one of you know you know my very very senior he has done his uh, you know masters from iit mumbai and he has settled there in atlanta actually it's very long back okay so he's very, uh, uh, I can say it's a very experienced person. He's running a consultancy over there. You connect me later on, okay? I'll help you out on that one. And yeah, sure. there are a lot of factors involved, like whether you are in, what is your status, whether you are in H1 or do we need to change your H1? There are a lot of processes. I will help you out on that part. You connect me separately, okay? Sure. Thanks, I'll help sir. you out definitely on that. Yeah. Thank you, guys. So is there anyone else who wants to ask any questions? Yeah. All right, then, Manish. And Manish, thank you so much. Really appreciate it.